Hey guys, hey kids, welcome, welcome to class. Um, wow, it's exciting to have you back. Guess what I got? No endorsement check, none, none. I'm still using the old computer. We're still gonna have problems with the pen and I'm still gonna complain. And my wife says I can't be an actor. What, is she crazy? I can be an actor. Look at his happy face. Math face. Coffee face. Ah, satisfaction face. Surprise face. Ah! Sad face. Man, I am good. I am good. Oh, man, this video is going to be long. We better get going because we're going to be here like all day long. Fast forward if you need to. Rewind if you need to. Definitely subscribe. I mean, where else are you going to get these great jokes? All right, kids, I haven't even tested to see if the pen's going to work. So probably not. No, let's go to Mr. Key. Let's see if Mr. Key's here. Oh, Mr. Key, he's here. He's ready to rock and roll. All right, let's read through this first problem. So today, what we're going to talk about today is trying to figure out why. Why would I want to do any of this stuff? Why would I want to model all this stuff? Why do I want to create an equation? What do I care about relative min, relative max, extrema, shape, and behavior? What do I care about any of that stuff? Why? Why is it important? We're going to do a little bit of that, and we're going to discuss real-life problems. So let's talk about real-life problems. The Center for Transportation Analysis, that's the CTA, studies all aspects of transportation in the United States from energy and environmental concerns to safety and security issues, challenges. A 1997, oh my gosh, you guys are like born then. No, you guys are, yeah, no, that was a, man, you guys are like 2,000. I got like 2,000 babies in my class. That's weird. Um... They compiled the following data on fuel economy in miles per gallon of a car or light truck at various speeds measured in miles per hour. The data is compiled below. So, what should be what should be the independent variable and why? All right, so independent variable. So, what is the independent variable? So, like if I write y equals x plus 5 or 2x plus 5, or 1 half x plus 5. x is the independent variable, okay? It affects what y is. So depending on what I put in y, what I put in for x, y is dependent. So if I put one thing in for x, y changes. If I put another thing in for x, y changes. So what is the thing that's going to change, and what is the thing that's being affected by it? Well, in this particular case, the thing that's changing or the things that I'm going to modify is my speed. I'm going to change my speed. So if I drive faster, I get a certain gas mileage. If I drive slower, I get a certain gas mileage. So in this case, speed would be my independent variable. Independent. The, more, the faster I drive, the more fuel I use. The slower I drive, the less fuel I use. The amount of fuel used depends on how fast you're driving. That's why it's going to be there. So what we're going to do is put this in our calculator. So if you want to, I've already got these numbers in the calculator, trying to speed things up a little bit. Um, but what we're going to do is type that those lists in. So if you need to hit pause, hit pause if you have a calculator. And then we're going to go through these simple directions on how to get it to look something like this. Now this graph that we have does not model this thing. I just put these on as old as old. Uh, screen capture, so I don't have to re-go th re through it. Plus, I wanted you to be able to do it and be able to tell me what the shape looked like. So the first thing I did was I went through and I called my independent variable, my A value X, uh, speed, and my Y value fuel, and I um, put those in my calculators. Now, I'm just going to take you through the options. I think you can either click on this or click on this dock button over here. Click on dock. We're going to insert data and statistics. Now, you got points all over the place. And that's because I haven't created my value. So we said the independent variable or the x value would be the speed. So as soon as I do this, things are going to shift. So those were all the different speeds we were going. And this makes sense, right? We did 5, 10, 
15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 40, 40, all the way up to 75. So nothing changes. But as soon as I add in the Y value here, we're going to see what their actual fuel values are. All right, so there's the shape of my thing, of my um, fuel economy. Now, you should be able to tell me that this has, what is the end behavior here? It's going down this direction, and it's going down in this direction. So you should be able to tell me, and that's the next question. So let me give a quick sketch of what this looks like over here. It kind of looks like this, correct? So my question is, can it be determined the model is an even or odd function? Well, since both arrows are pointing in the same direction, this is an even function. Not only is it an even function, I know that my leading coefficient, that's the next question, and it, my next question is going to be, what does the leading coefficient have to be? In this case, the, the leading coefficient is going to be uh, negative. And why is it going to be negative? Because they're both coming down. So what does this tell me? It tells me as my speed increases, my fuel economy increases up to a certain point. And at that, after a certain point, I start to lose fuel economy. Is the leading coefficient that can be used to model positive or negative? We know it's negative because it's coming down. We already said it. Negative because it's coming down. List two possible reasons data might have the shape it does. Well, why would the shape all go up and seem like it's going up, 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 and then keep going up a little bit, and up, 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 and then go down? Well, one reason for it might be um, cars have this um, a certain miles per hour, and I think it's like 35 or 40 miles per hour, where you get your maximum speed. See here's at 34 miles per hour, you can get your maximum um, fuel efficiency. And then there is another speed at which you go and you get another maximum speed. But at some point, there's so much wind resistance and so much weight, and so and you're just blowing through fuel because you're going too fast. It reminds me of a time I drew, drove, drove, I drove to... Um, on one of the Autobahns, first time, one of the first times I drove my father-in-law's car on an Autobahn, we were going to uh, Frankfurt, and I thought we were late. And I was driving, and Autobahns in Germany, and some of the Autobahns in Germany, you can drive as fast as you want. So on our way there, we were doing like 120 miles per hour. <laughs> we were flying. And when we got there, we were completely out of gas. And I remember telling my father-in-law this later that we were out of gas. He was like, how fast are you driving? You can't, you know, at a certain, if you're going 120 miles an hour, you are blowing through gas. And if you're going too slow, you know, you're, you're, you're creating too much friction and your car has to use more um, gas to get you going. We're going to create a linear regression equation for this. Uh, let's go back to, see if I can get back to my data. Data, 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 data. There's my data. And we're going to create a re regression equation. Now, as I looked at this equation, and it looked like, it looked kind of like this. It didn't quite look like a parabolic shape. It looked a little bit more like maybe a quartic, a fourth degree. It didn't, certainly didn't look cubic. And it did kind of quadratic and quite, so we're going to do quadratic and quartic and see if there's a better equation. So we'll do one, menu, stats, st uh, stat calculations, and we'll do quad, uh, quadratic regression. Uh, X was my speed and Y was my fuel, and we'll click OK. And, of course, we lose our pen. So, on my quadratic, I've got, uh, for quadratic, and we're rounded the nearest tenths, quadratic. I get y equals negative point, well, I can't round this to the tenth, so we'll go to the thousandth. Negative point zero zero eight x squared plus seven point oops point seven three seven four zero x plus uh, 
plus 16.03, plus 16.03, zero. So that would be a quadratic. Let's look at a quartic. A quartic would be a fourth degree polynomial. And this one had a R value, an R squared value, a um, variance of 0.91. So let's look at a quartic. Let's try doing this again. We'll just rewrite over this stuff. I don't know what happened. So we'll go menu, stats, stat calculations. In this case, we're going to try quartic. We still have the same independent variable, we'll just speed and still the same fuel. And we'll click OK, and it's going to ask if you want to overwrite all your other stuff, and we do. We want to get rid of it. So in this case, we're going to end up with y equals negative 0 0.008. Oops, I did quadratic again. I thought that was weird. I did quadratic again. That was weird. So let's go up. I don't know why I did that. Menu, stats, stat calculations. Oops, cancel. Menu, stat, stat calculations. And we're going to do quartic, which is down here. Still the same thing. Speed and fuel. We'll click OK. Yes, we want to erase it. So this is going to be a little bit different. I knew these were going to be different. So in this case, y equals negative 6 point, we're going to do the tenth value. This is why I want a tenth. x cubed fourth, x to the fourth, plus, well, if I round this, that's 0 to the tenths place. Round this, so plus 0 x cubed minus 0.1x plus 2.6, this should be x squared, x plus 0.6. So that would be my quartic. And I think, let's see, I think this gives us a better value. Yeah, see our, our, our thing here is 0.95 for our variance. I think that's a much better model for this, is a quartic model. What if I could graph this? Insert graph. No. Insert. I know there's a way to put a graph over this. Oh well. Anyway, that's that. Um, okay, let's go back to the spread thing here. All right, let's go to the next problem. Oh, do I hate these sometimes. Okay. Oh, how I count the waves till I get a new computer. Okay, so here we're going to have another problem. The National Agriculture NS with USDA collects and analyzes data covering, ooh, Brugers, virtually every aspect of agriculture in the United States. The following table contains information on the amount of tons of following vegetable produced in the United States from 1988 to 1994. Um, okay, whatever. All right, so plot this data using your calculus. So, so I'm getting, mm, let's plot it. I'm going to have to plot it. Doggone it, I keep going to the wrong stuff. I don't need this. I don't need this. I need my calculator. I got to get rid of the crap I already had, so let's get rid of it. No. Uh, I'm going to hit pause so that you don't have to watch me put this in. Bye. All right, I'm back. All right, I put the data in. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into Doc, 
uh, insert data and statistics. And in this case, the year would be the independent variable. So we'll put year along the bottom. Okay, that doesn't matter. And then this is going to depend on it. So up here is production. So if I look at this shape, it's going down to the left and up to the right. So that clearly to me singles an odd function. Um, is it odd or even? And not only is it odd, we're going to say it's odd. It's an odd function because it's going like this. We're also going to say its leading coefficient is positive. All right, so what we want to do now is, and I've talked about, you know, just looking at that shape. We want to do a regression equation. But in order to do a regression equation, I've got to look at my, what it tells me is my rules here. My rules are i got to use zero to represent 1988. So when I come back to my data, I've got to go back to my data, which is on my calculator. Um, i got to go make this zero, 1988. So 99, 9, 89 would be four, five, and six. So that's what I needed to use in order to do my um, linear or my regression. Now, because we said this was a quadratic, again, this is, you know, in the past we've just told you, do a quadratic, do a quadratic, do a, do a linear regression, do a whatever. Now you're going to have to decide. You're going to have to look up and say, okay, do I do a quadratic? Do I do a quartic? In this case, because it's a cubic, we want to, because it's a cubic regression, we're going to do that, okay? Um, this was year and this was production, or amount of production. Okay, there's my regression equation. And let's just get those down. So, two, a, uh, what do we tell us to round to? Nearest ton. So, no decimals. 213,183. So, y equals 213,183. X cubed, notice it's positive, minus 197,954, minus 197,957, 954, and I think it was 8X. Yep, 8. And then 50, 535,972 plus 535,972, 8. Nine. And there's my linear, there's my quartic regression equation. And I got to go get my dog because he's bothering me. Okay, sorry about that. Dog is driving me crazy. Yeah, that's right, you dog. Love you, but you're crazy. I'll introduce you to him at the end of the video, if I remember. Um, okay, there's our regression equation. Why does that keep coming back up? I don't want that. <laughs> I did it again. All right, let's do this. Okay, what's next? All right, so here we go. This should be clearly, it kind of looks like a parabola, right? It's a fundraiser, decide, sell, per, uh, we're going to sell these silly t-shirts, shell, 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 t-shirts on the seashore. Uh, we want to decide how many t-shirts to sell at a fixed price. Um, so we're not going to change the price, but we're going to determine how many we're going to sell. So the price is fixed, so how much we're going to sell and what the profit is. So, uh, identify the y-intercept and, and determine what this meaning is. So, in this case, the y-intercept is right here, obviously. And it looks like it's about, if every box is 50, it looks like it might be negative $125. Well, what does that represent? Well, if you're going to make t-shirts and... Uh, you're going to get started on it, you have startup costs. You have to pay for the design. You have to pay for the person getting them. You have to pay for the t-shirts. You got to pay for everything. So this will be just your startup cost. And every business has a startup cost. You're trying to minimize your startup cost, but you don't want to, you want to be able to, you know, get rolling and start selling quick. So that would be your startup cost. Um, what's the next question? I'm going to leave this up here while I try to answer these questions. If we model this data with a function, what point on the graph uh, represents it in order to break even? Now, break even means we've made no money. Now, remember, this is my profit here. So at this point right here, I've made no money. So if I sell, looks like, I mean, if I draw this in here, 
if I sell what looks like maybe approximately, right? Well, right here's my break even point. And this one says, what's the smallest number of t-shirts they can sell to still make a profit? And it looks like if these are each five, so somewhere between 12 and 13 shirts, I start to break even. Then the next question asks, how many t-shirts would they sell in order to maximize profit? Well, again, this is one of those maximize profit questions. So what we're looking for is the peak. And this right here, about here is the peak. So it looks like somewhere around 35 shirts, I would maximize my profit and my profit would be somewhere around, I don't know, 280 bucks. So if I sell 35 shirts, that's gonna maximize profit. So 35 shirts I should sell. No more, no less. And my maximum profits would be somewhere around $280. Get in there. Come here. Come here. Lay down. Good boy. When I order my... What factors would affect the profit? Well, sometimes when you sell... If you sell too few of shirts, you don't make any... If you sell too many, you might make, you try, or if you, if you have too many uh, that you try to sell, like 50 of them, you know, maybe you don't get as many people buying them and maybe, maybe you only sell like two thirds of them. You know, if I sold, you know, if I, if I made 50 shirts and I sold them, uh, I might not be able to make as much money. Or if I, or if I make too many shirts, then people won't want to spend as much, or maybe the novelty will wear off. So sometimes you got to be careful. You want to get your, and that's one of the things that, you know, lots of people get paid for. You're trying to hit the sweet spot. If I, if I charge too much, nobody wants to buy it. If I charge too little, I didn't make enough money. I could have charged more. So you're trying to hit the, what's called the sweet spot. I like to call it the sweet spot. I don't know what it's really called. Uh, and what would cause the profit to start decreasing? Uh, if you make too many shirts, if you make too many shirts, you're not going to make enough money. You'll just, you know, have to eat a bunch of costs. Eh, that's about it. The following graph shows the temperature at Aspen, Colorado during a 40 out period, 45, 48 hour period starting at midnight on Thursday. So in the middle of winter, all right? So we're in the freezing temperatures. And so let's start thinking about what this graph represents. This is our temperature over here. And these are degrees Fahrenheit probably. That doesn't say, should probably say degrees, degrees, and then we'll go Fahrenheit, makes sense. Um, and at midnight, so this is right here, 12 a.m. That makes this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 a.m. 5 a.m., 8 a.m., 11 a.m. This is 12, that's noon, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the problem with it is, is these are times. Notice how these times are repeating themselves, and you really can't graph times that repeat themselves like that. So as far as a linear model goes, we're going to have to say that this is time 0. That makes this time 12. That makes this time 24. That makes 12 o'clock here, this time 36 hours. That makes this time over here 48 hours. Not the clock time, but actual elapsed time, 24, 12 hours, 24 hours, 36 hours, so on and so forth. And it kind of makes sense in the middle of the night, it, it, at about midnight, it gets to the lowest temperature. Maybe it gets a little bit colder during the night. And then as the sun comes out, it warms up, it warms up, it warms up. And then, it, and then as you get further on in the day and back towards midnight, it starts to cool off. And somewhere around 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, it's hit its coldest, in this case, at 5 a.m. And then this day, it looks like maybe we got more sun. It got a little bit warmer, got a little bit warmer, got a little warmer, got about freezing. Yay! And then it came back, 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 down, back, down, back, down. And that kind of makes sense as far as a good winter day. Get a little bit of sun, you get more, you get more temperature. Get a little less sun, you don't get as much temperature. So this is a particular question. So let's take a look at modeling. That's a linear function, y equals x. y equals x squared has one maximum point. 
the models that I keep going, this is a cubic function. Notice there are two extrema. These are called relative mins and relative maxes. This is an absolute maximum because it's the highest value. But these little bump points, one low, one high, they're called relative means. And what they mean by that is within a small window, it's the highest point. It's a peak or a valley. You can think about relative mins and relative maxes as peaks and valleys. So this would be y equals x cubed. Notice there are two peaks and valleys. Uh, if I went to a fourth degree function, you know, the normal fourth degree function would look something like, right, one, two, three peaks and valleys. So that might be a y to the fourth. So as far as what we're looking for in terms of what regression or what kind of an equation would model this, you know, other than a sine curve, but a sine curve has a definite up and definite down, we would look for peaks and valleys. So this is kind of a valley here, and this would be a peak here, and this would be a valley here, and this would be a peak here, and this would be a valley here. So if I'm just looking at this 48 hour period, I've got one, two, three, uh, I thought I had four, I thought I had five. Oh yeah, one, two, three, four, five. I have five relative extrema, or five relative mins and maxes. Now if you understand, there's probably one over here somewhere over here in this area too, maybe six. So I would say that this is probably, um, well, this is going back up. So let's say there's another relative extrema here. So then what we have then is six relative extrema. So probably this is a fifth degree polynomial. Would be a really good way to model this thing. Doesn't have to be. I mean, if I kept going, I can go seventh degree, eighth degree, ninth degree polynomial. But so in this case, yeah, let's just stick with that. Um, let's. That's not that important. That's the port that probably the le you know least right important at least for now. You'll get into more of that stuff as you get a little bit older. Um, let t represent the function at uh, t. So in Fahrenheit, t if we let t equal zero correspond to midnight on Thursday, interpret the meaning of t five. Well, t five is the temp at five a.m. So in this case, we're going to look for five a.m. Probably pick a different color, go green. At 5 a.m., there's 5 a.m., there's 5 a.m., there's 5, there's, there's 5 a.m., and my temperature will be 13 degrees. So in this case, the temperature at 13 degrees, at 5 a.m. would be 13 degrees. Um, what, oh, well, that this is the temperature, at t and this, Briscoe, enough. Get over here. Come here. Come here. down. All right. Um, and then that would be 13 degrees. Relative max and mins are basically the high points and the low points of the day. So what do they mean in terms of this? Well, this would be the high dip point, the highest temperature for Thursday. So Thursday's high temperature looks like it's about 27 or 28 degrees. The high temperature on Friday would be some, this is the high temperature on Friday, and this temperature looks like it might be about 34 degrees. So the peaks and valleys represent, or the relative extrema represent the high and the low temperature. The low temperature on Thursday looks like it might be down here about six degrees. And the low temperature on Thursday might be somewhere around 10 degrees. So the relative extrema in this case represent the peaks and the valleys, the lowest and the minus, the highest values. So let's talk about this. Um, this is clearly a cubic function. And if you look at this function, I look at it, my C value. The only thing I know about my C is it's probably negative. Less than, not equal to zero, but less than equal to zero. Negative, why is it negative? Because it's going up that way and down that way. So here's the function I was told models this. The only thing I don't know is this constant. And I wanna show you a way to find that. Let's take a look at this point. It's a relative max, it's not an absolute max, it's a relative max, and its coordinates are 5, 800. So at 5, my value is 800. So my V of 5 is equal to 800, or 800 is equal to C times 5 cubed minus 
2, 5 times 5. So I want to figure out what that is. So I'm going to go to my calculator. It's uh, 5 cubed. That's 125. I could just put 125. Minus 72.25. 72.25 times 5 equals negative 23625. So 800 is equal to C times negative 236.25, was it? And now I want to take 800 and divide it by this answer. And I get negative, point, negative 3.386. So C is equal to negative 3.386. So if I was looking at this equation, the model that modeled the function of the equation, the function that would model this graph would be negative 3.386 r cubed minus 72.25 r. Just a way to find c. Plug in a point we know. The owner of Dizzy Lizzy, Gizzy Lizzy Dizzy. That's what I should have said Gizzy Dizzy. that the wait time at their most popular roller coaster is represented by this table. So, depending on what time I started the, uh, depending on what time I start my timing, uh, this is time zero, I don't know what time, whatever time the park opens, after one hour, after two hours, after three hours, after four hours, after five hours, oh, excuse me, after four hours, seven hours, eight hours, 10 hours, and 12 hours. And then the number of people in line. So she makes this scatter plot and she determines that it's a cubic function. Do you agree that it's cubic? Notice it's going down in this direction and up in this direction. So yeah, it's got a cubic um, function at, that can model this behavior. Now we're really only interested in this part right here, which is just a quadratic, but that's okay. I can, I'm going to use a cubic to model this behavior. So the question is, the question is, why? Why would I care about this data? Believe it or not, there are constantly t checking their analytics. Analytics are all the data that they collect. You hear, you hear the word analytics all the time. All the data that's being collected. And why, if I'm at park, would I care about knowing when this line is the longest? Well, there's a number of reasons. One, I might need more cleaners. Maybe more people to clean around that area at this particular time. Somewhere between five and eight hours, it gets crazy busy, so I might want a lot of cleaners on there. Two, maybe I don't want that many people in line. Maybe that number of people in line bothers me, so maybe I'll open up a few more lines or have a few more people come in. Well, if it's a roller coaster, opening up a few more lines really isn't going to help out. Uh, maybe it's at this time I want some of my vendors, some of my ice cream vendors or my cotton candy vendors to really walk by and say, hey, this, this line's got lots of people standing around doing nothing. So you can see why a business would want to know when is my most popular time. And whenever my most popular time is, I want to do X and Y and Z to try to maximize my profits, to try to increase the amount of money I make. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people making a lot of money trying to give this information to businesses. Estimate the time where it's at its longest. Well, I'm going to guess somewhere around here would be its longest time. So that looks like it might be, I don't know, somewhere between four and seven hours, maybe 5.5 .5 hours. What did I write on here? I think I wrote 5.5, .5, about 5.5. .5. Oh, here's five right here. So that's five, that's 10, there's six. So maybe six hours, about six hours. Let's go 5.5. .5. That's why I did all my calculations. But it's 5.5 .5 hours. I'm going to make the most amount of money. And the most amount of money I'm going to make is somewhere up here. Oh, let's be really fun. And I'm going to make three. And there's 300, not money, but 372 people in line. I don't know. It's a guess. It's an approximation. I should put approximately 5.5 .5 hours. And I maximize my number of people in line at approximately 372. Estimate. The t intercepts this function to model. Oh, okay. So the t x the t intercepts. Remember, this is t. 
So my t-intercepts would be 0, 12, and it looks like this one's probably around 33. Now, why is that important? What do I, why, why would that be important? Let's say I had a quadratic that had uh, negative 1 and 4 as its roots, and I drew it like this. Well, doesn't that mean it came from two parentheses? If this was negative 1, wasn't in here x plus 1? And over here, if this was 4, wouldn't this be x minus 4? So I could say this, the model that did, that the, the, a function that models this. Now, what's the one, this is x squared minus 3x uh, minus 4. The only thing I don't know about is if it looks like that, or if it looks like this, or if it looks like this. I don't know how steep it is. So there's some constant out front. I just don't know how steep it is, but I know that it can be modeled that it's going to go through those points. If I can put those in the parentheses, well, how, how's that going to help me? It says, use these t-intercepts to write a formula, formula, for the function of um, people in line after t hours. Well, here's how it's going to work. f of t is going to equal, now again, I don't know what this constant is, but I know what my roots are. My roots are t. Remember, if I put a t out here, x out here, that means 0 is one of my roots. Uh, I said 5.5, so t minus 5.5. It's minus because it's a positive 5.5 is one of my roots. And 33 was my other root, t minus 33. So it says, using the maximus profits point, find the leading coefficient. Explain your reasoning. So we said our maximum profit was at 5. Oh, this is, shouldn't be 5.5. Uh, what was that value? 12. This should be 12. Sorry, this was 12. My three zeros were 0. This is t equals 0. t equals 12. And t equals 33. So I'm not going to go through this. I'll do this more in class because I don't want to spend that much time doing it. But if my maximum profit was, or my maximum number of people in line was 372, I'm going to take 372 and I'm going to set it equal to c times 5.5 because my time at my the time for my maximum profits was 5.5 5.5 5 minus 12 and 5.5 minus 33. So I'm going to type all of this into my calculator. See what I get. Um, so lay down 5.5 parentheses. 5.5 minus 12, parenthesis, parenthesis, 5.5 minus 33. And I get 983.125. So 372 is equal to whatever that constant is times 983.125. Well, to figure out what that constant is, I just divide. And I take 372 and I divide it by this answer and I get 0.378. So C is equal to 0.378. So this, and now wait a second, let's see if that makes sense. Should it be positive? Oh yeah, it's going up in this direction and up, down in this direction and that slope is positive. So I should have a positive leading coefficient. And there it is right there. What would be a reasonable domain for my function f? Well, a reasonable domain would be between 0 and, I guess, 12.5. No, tw let me erase. Oh, no, 12, 0 and 12. So between 0, because why would I want to go? I can't go below. I can't go below this. If this is people in line, you can't go below negative people in line. You can't count zombies. This isn't The Walking Dead. So 0 and 12.0. Use your function f to calculate the number of people in line 10 hours after the park started. So our function f, f of t, was equal to point, I forgot what we came up with for c. 
0.3783 times t times t minus 12 times t minus 33. This is my equation. I'm not going to distribute all this stuff out. It's clearly a cubic. And I want to do it for t equals 10. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same equation. Nope. I'm going to use this number. Enter. Uh, but I'm only going to do the numbers I picked. That's as far as I want. Parenthesis. Uh, Ten. Parenthesis. Parenthesis. Ten minus twelve. Parenthesis. Parenthesis. Ten minus thirty-three. And if I hit enter, I should have hundred and seventy-four guesses. So if I use this, it's hundred and seventy-four guesses. Now let's go look up here at ten. Ten. One hundred and eighty. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's a good model. It's not a bad model. 10, 180. Um, is this model pretty good? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's only off by six. So that's actually pretty good. That's not a bad model right there. Um, oh, we wanna, we're going to do a cubic regression model of this. So what i got to do is I'm going to pause again. And I'll come back when I have all this data in my calculator. Okay, I'm back. So I've typed in hours and I've typed in people. And now I'm going to do a, we said this was a cubic, right? If we look back at the table, if we look back at our uh, graph. Am I recording? Get off. Uh, here we go. Got to go to this. Got to go to this. Got to go to this. There we go. All right. So remember, we said this was a cubic. So we're going to do cubic regression. Every time I do that, that silly thing comes up. All right, so we're going to do cubic regression. So we go to menu, stats, stat calculations, and we're going to do cubic regression. Uh, my independent variable was hours, and depending on the number of hours depends on the number of people, and I click OK. So there's my function. This is my linear regression function. Let's see, where'd my pen go? 0.3745. So let's go drawing. So y equals 0.3745x cubed minus 16 point 6078, 6078 plus 150.303. Something is a little off on that one. Not loving this this equation. I feel like I put some data in here wrong. Zero zero one seventy five two two twenty five four three forty five seven three fifty five eight three ten ten one eighty and twelve forty five. Well, there's the equation. There's my equation. So let's see if that makes any sense. I don't know. Let's see. So I'm going to put in 10 into this equation and see what I get. So go back to calculator. So it's 0.3745. So 0.3745 uh, parenthesis 10 parenthesis 10 cubed. Get out of that. Uh, oh, this should be cubed. Oh, my equation. Oh, oh, that's why. Oh, that's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. That's why. Okay. Now, I knew something was wrong. Let me go back to this. Uh, I, did, I did a quartic, not a cubic. So, I should have an A, B, C, and a D. So, and then it's minus 21.25. So, so, this should be X squared and this should be x and then it's minus 21.253028 three two five three two eight two five three two eight that makes more sense okay i think this is a better model i mean the fact that it was coming up with at zero 150 didn't make any sense to me so uh I'll go back to my calculator and we're gonna do minus 16 points so minus 16 point six oh seven eight parenthesis, 10 parenthesis, squared, plus 
303 times 10 minus 21.25328, 25328, enter. 195.58. So in the, when I use this model, when I use this model, I get y equals 195. Okay, enough. Uh, when I use that model, I use I get 195.08. Now it should be 180. So 195 is pretty far off. It's like 15 off. Whereas when I used my uh, equation model, it wasn't too bad. And I'm not going to go through this table. That's just too much work. Um, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that. That's enough. That's enough. I think you got enough. I think you got a picture of what's going on. I think you got a little bit of a picture. We're going to keep we're going to keep messing with this. I might have a work day when we do problems like this just to get some fun with it. But what you need to know is collecting data and creating a model that represents that table and be able to predict based on that is very very important for companies to be able to do. Come here, Briscoe. Come here, buddy. Hey, baby, baby. Come on. Come here. Come here. Come here. Ugh. This is my doggy. This is my doggy. He's my big doggy. Say hi, Briscoe. Say hi. Say hi, Briscoe. Don't lick me. All right, kids. This is my big dog. Maybe sometime I'll show you my little dog, but she's kind of a pain. You're a good doggy, aren't you? Bye. Briscoe, up here. Say hi. No, no, that's crazy.